Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I will be looking at a model that I have built uh, for the 2020 and 2024 elections. I, I, I built it, plugged it into 2020, and, you know, kind of checked it was accurate. And then I'm going to compare it to what I think is going to happen in 2024. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, obviously, Happy New Year if you, uh, or if I haven't, actually, yeah, I haven't posted this new year. What am I talking about? Because um, it's January 2nd. I'm recording this the afternoon of January 1st. Um, and I will be, uh, hopefully recording more this week. My new year's resolution, at least for YouTube is to post more consistently, but I always say that. And who am I kidding? I'm probably going to, in a few months, f fall back into the trap of, uh, having inconsistent upload schedule. But regardless, uh, no one wants to hear me talk about my upload schedule. Everyone wants to hear me talk or not everyone. That's a bold assumption, but, um, <laughs> the video is supposed to be talking about this model. So, um, this is a very brief and models generous model makes it seem like I'm a super smart person who gets paid to do, you know, builds, you know, analytical electoral analysis, uh, based off of, you know, a lot of numbers. That's not what I'm doing and I'm not smart enough to do that, but I am, um, or I, I was able to kind of piece together, uh, a string of variables that I had kind of thought off the top of my head, um, in just a few minutes. Uh, you know, so there wasn't too much thought to it, but you know, I, I, I pieced it together and I put in a, or, you know, a, a few functions and did some very simple math, which I will be explaining. It's again, it's, it's very simple. A, a lot of models, some people have models or I've seen models for elections that have 30 or 35 functions and variables to them. Mine has four. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's much simpler than that. Um, I, I think everyone watching this video could probably do it. So, um, that's what I did. And it's the purpose of the model isn't to give you an accurate prediction. I, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's, it, it got 40 or 48 to 50 states right in 2020, uh, when you plug it in or uh, when you plug in the data from 2020, uh, it, it, it gives you red Georgia, but blue Florida, which is kind of a strange combination. But aside from that, it's right. You know, it, it, it also identifies a lot of the big things like it, a lot of models in 2020 had Biden winning like Michigan by eight and Pennsylvania by seven. And this model is pretty close as I'm winning Michigan by, um, three, he won it by 2.8 Pennsylvania. Biden's ahead by, um, 1.5. He won it by 1.2. So it's, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm definitely not embarrassed of it, but I wouldn't use it solely to predict elections. Um, but it's, it's a fundamentals model. So what it does is it takes um, the polling average. It takes uh, the average from the previous election. So uh, I, I did this for 2020 just to see how close it was to the actual results. So 2020 polling average, 2016 polling average. And then what you do is um, my functions are either weighted as a whole or a quarter. So a one function or a 0.25 function. Um, and so what I did was I took uh, kind of the, uh, you know, polls in 2016, 2020, I took the discrepancy, divided that by four because it's weighted as 0.25 and not a full one. And then I added that on. So uh, in 2020, let's say Biden's up in a state by 10 and then Clinton's up in 2016 by six. That's a 4% gap in favor of Biden. Um, four divided by four is one. So Biden gets a point added on for 2020. If it were 10 for Clinton, six for Biden, um, Biden would be subtracted one because he's doing four or four points worse uh, weighted as a quarter function. Um, you know, he does one point worse. Um, and then that's added in. It's one of the variables here. You just have the 2016 result. Very simple. You know, just a quick Google search. Um, and then you, I, I put in the 2012 to 2016 swing and then I divided it by four as well. Cause I didn't, cause I initially didn't really divide it that much and it was really affecting my, um, variables a lot. Cause I would, cause I'd take the average of these three. I, I, you know, do all these numbers and add them up, divide by three. And then I would apply this, a swing to them and it would give me crazy results. Like, you know, if, if a state trended, you know, a lot to the right between 2012 and 2016, like Iowa or Ohio would give you a ludicrous 2020 number. And then I was like, you know what, what am I doing here? Swing is never the exact same between elections. It often gets smaller after one severe swing. It'll kind of calm down. So, you know, to kind of get a, a happy medium, I, I also made it a quarter function. It's a 0.25 function here. Yeah, you, know, you take it, you divide it by four. Um, and I should also probably add on a, a asterisk there. But yeah, so that's what you get. And as you can see, it's like it, it's it, it's not amazing, but it's not bad. Uh, in Alabama, which is a deep red state, no one really cares about it electorally. Um, they're playing college football. I, actually, when I'm going to record this, I think it'll be the first quarter. Um, and I'm, I, I bet Michigan's going to win that game. 
um, everyone's taking Alabama, but Michigan by like a touchdown or something. Like, I don't know, 35, 28, maybe there's a few field goals, but Michigan by six or seven. Uh, regardless, I do not have models for football. I only have vibes and predictions and I would, and I've been very wrong in the past. Um, but, uh, going back to this, you know, Bama or <laughs> football, uh, Alabama, Trump's expected to win by 23 and a half. Um, and then in real life, you won by 25 and a half Alaska. It's actually down to 0.1%. That's pretty good. Arizona, he's Biden's expected to win by four and a half. You won it by 0.3. So that's not as great. Um, but yeah, so again, it's decent, uh, for predicting, but I built this more to kind of compare actual results to how they, to how the fundamentals would have indicated. So in the red States, um, Trump did better than the fundamentals and in the green States, Biden did better. So for example, in Utah, uh, which is kind of a fluke, this is when I kind of wanted to get out of the way as kind of an exception because in 2016, Evan McMullen, the third party candidate took away like 22% of the vote and that skewed the results in the polls and all that. It also affected the 2012 to 2016 trend function in a way that really benefited Democrats. So the model saw that it didn't realize and it thought that, uh, you know, Biden should have only lost Utah by 4%. Um, but obviously he, that was, it was never, it's never really that close. But aside from Utah, the, the biggest discrepancy is Utah, which is 8%. So Utah's more than half as weird or as, um, you know, different than any other state. So aside from Utah, it's a pretty decent, it's pretty sound. Um, but you know, again, the darker, the red state, like Idaho or Utah, the better Trump did compared to what the model would have thought or th what the fundamentals would have thought. And then the green states, um, you know, the darker, the shade of green, there's only two shades. Cause Biden didn't really do Biden didn't really knock it out of the park in any states the way Biden did in Utah and Idaho. Um, you know, the, the, the green is better for Biden compared to the model. So as you can see, um, more states are red than green. 37 of them are or 37 plus DC are red and then 13 are green. And what that says is essentially um, Trump did better than we thought in 2020 or than this model would have thought. And again, that's not surprising because this model factors in the polls and the polls are wrong in most cases. They had Biden doing a lot better than he did. Um, you know, the polls had him winning Florida. They had him winning North Carolina. They had him winning, um, you know, close in Texas. And that affected some of the results. That's why Biden was ahead in Florida by 0.9 percent of my model. So, um, you know, that's kind of part of it. And that is why. There's there's some you know f there are flaws to this obviously it's just it's spreadsheet math um, that isn't particularly complicated so there isn't really any way to, to you know to for the model to recognize oh that this is going to be a polling error this is going to be wrong and that's why again Florida Trump did a lot better than the model would have thought so um, again that's why I wouldn't use it to predict elections but it is kind of why uh, or it, it is kind of an indicator of where Trump's going to do well so in 2024 we're likely to have a Biden versus Trump matchup again. Um, and so what that's going to mean is that for this model, which I plan on using, I will look at it and I'll say, look, in, in this green state, Biden did better than what the fundamentals would have expected. In this red state, Trump did better. And so for that reason, let's say, you know, I, I, I plug in the 2024, like if you go back to this, I can plug in 2024 polling averages. Once we get more of those, I can, you know, plug in the differences between that and 2020. I can plug in the 2020 results or place 2016. I'll plug to uh, the 2016 to 2020 swing. And I will get, you know, numbers over here. And I think they'll be pretty accurate. I think they'll be pretty reasonable. Um, and I think I'll see them and, and, I'll, and I'll be like, okay, these are numbers that are plausible. Um, obviously, if I get a number like Biden wins West Virginia by 27 points, I'd be a little confused and I'd probably have to, you know, look at the model a little bit. And I'd probably be a little sad because it would mean I wasted my time on a uh, silly problem in, in a model that is now useless because there's, you know, um, the model would be ridiculous if it thought Biden would be winning West Virginia or something like that. But it'll probably give me good results, and I would probably look at that and say, okay, I can now go back to this, and I can see where is Biden going to do well, and where is he going to do worse. So if he is supposed to do really well in a state that he did really poorly in for the fundamentals like Idaho or Oklahoma or uh, in a more important state like Texas or Florida, I can be a little more – I can be a bit more cautious on Biden's performance. Now, if the model says he's going to do really well in a state like uh, you know, Georgia or Colorado, I can say, okay – that's good for Biden. That means that I can probably be confident. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to write more about it on my Substack, which I will also try to be writing on more. Um, and it, it's in the, the link's in the description. Go follow me uh, on there. Subscribe to my uh, e uh, articles there. You, you'll get them in your email if you put your email in. Um, but uh, anyways, um, I, I'll write about this more, and I will go in-depth state by state. And I want to look – I kind of want to, you know, to an extent revisit 2020 and say – uh, you know, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, those are states where Trump did well. Um, you know, Georgia, Biden did well. 
uh, North Carolina, Trump did well, and I'll say why they did well or poorly and what that means for 2024. And on this channel, I, I won't go as in-depth because obviously that would be too long of a video, but I will uh, you know, talk about this a little bit. And, and again, there are trends you can pick up on here, right? Like in the you know rural Mountain West, Trump did really well. Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, he did amazing compared to the model. Um, in New England, he did pretty poorly uh, compared to the model. In the South, kind of a mixed bag. He didn't really do all that great in Mississippi, Louisiana, but he did well in Alabama. You know, Arkansas, Texas, didn't do, do that well in Georgia, but he did well in Florida, South Carolina. And then there's some, you know, in this model actually kind of shows where Democrats ended up doing well in the midterms. It's, it, it's kind of predictive in that way. Alaska, it picked up on them doing well there. In New York, picked up on Republicans doing well there. Same with California and Florida. And then Michigan, kind of one exception. It's kind of a blue wave there, but it, it's a light red. It, it's not like a dark red like New York or Florida. Um, but yeah, so this is, it, it's an interesting concept. I I, I hope it's going to be valuable um, as we walk into 2024. Uh and I, I hope I explained it well in this video. It, it's simple. It's just a few concepts that kind of show the fundamentals, and this is what the fundamentals would have predicted in 2020. And this is how you know 2020 went uh, when when you compare it to the you know models prediction. So uh, let me know what you want to see next, and uh, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.